experiences with Mayor and saying that you brought opportunities to the Northeast and Northwest, but you did the same thing for Southeast and Southwest. We have eight wards in the city, and I want every ward to be able to be a place that people will want to be. People will be proud of and say, I'm proud to live in the District of Columbia, and I'm proud no matter where I may live in the city, because it's a place that people want to be.
any endeavor we undertake, anything we do, is absolutely stronger uh, with this steady hand uh, on the rudder. And I want to thank Jerry uh, for chairing uh, our campaign. How about a big hand for Jerry Ward? campaign is also led by co-chairs uh, as well. Uh, I know Judah Terra is here somewhere. Please, Judah, stand up and be recognized. And thank you so much. You know, Judith is a wonderful person. Uh, she um, was with me every step of the way uh, last time. As a matter of fact, I had a meeting, a dinner meeting with Judith and some of her friends who then spent three and a half hours talking me into doing this. And by the time they finished with me, I would have agreed to anything that you did. <laughs> and you know, everyone knows about Judah's dedication to the arts and the philanthropy, uh, you know, uh, in, the, uh, in the city. It spans the ideological uh, spectrum. And her generosity, Judah, thank you so much for your generosity to our city. That's where we thank you so much. Sonia Gutierrez, who is a friend and known to all of us, is also one of our co-chairs. Everybody knows her enthusiasm, her effusive spirit. <laughs> she has spent the last 40 years changing countless lives. Uh, she is the founding director, of course, of uh, the Carlos Rosario uh, School and uh, has empowered immigrants and helped uh, pave the way uh, for their success. Unfortunately, uh, Sonia Sony is under the weather uh, today, but I think we all know that if she weren't, she would be here to be a part of this today. <laughs> I also want to ask, uh, I want to ask us to keep uh, my good friend and a good friend of many people here, Alberto Gomez, uh, in your prayers. Alberto is actually recovering from heart surgery. Um, I talked to his daughter, we communicated via text message, and I actually talked to Alberto before he went in uh, for uh, surgery. And uh, I think we all know that Alberto and Sonia are so much a force uh, in our community. Let's please keep Alberto in our prayers, and Sonia, we know, will be out there on the campaign trail with us every chance he gets. So thank you very much. Also chairing our uh, co-chairing our campaign uh, is John Chinpay. Uh, okay. uh, John is a restaurateur. Uh, he is a uh, civic leader, a very hard-working civic leader, and uh, he has a can-do approach uh, to tackling challenges. That John, I think you know, is something that I admire and deeply appreciate. Uh, you working with us uh, on this uh, campaign. Now, we're building a strong campaign with supporters from every neighborhood uh, and every ward uh, in the District of Columbia. I think you all know that every Democratic uh, candidate needed 2,000 signatures um, to get on the ballot. Um, and I actually didn't even make the decision to do this until three weeks into the process of people uh, gathering uh, signatures already. They started on November 8th. We didn't start at least make a decision until December uh, 2nd. So I want to ask you if you all would give a huge round of applause to our supporters, uh, our volunteers, and people who select the signatures and the polls.
Now, you know, campaigns and elections are uh, typically uh, about the future. Um, I think a good candidate has to answer at least two basic questions. Question one is what do you plan uh, to do? And then how do you plan to do it? We have big plans. And frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a record that proves that we can achieve uh, those plans. But before we talk about the future, I want to say something about the past. Everyone knows that our 2010 campaign had shortcomings. I've spoken with people uh, in living rooms, in their backyards, in barbershops, in sidewalks, and anywhere that I could talk to people. I apologize, I've apologized to families, I've apologized to friends, and I've apologized to colleagues. I know that the 2010 campaign caused many people great pain. And I know that our city, that I was among them, suffered great embarrassment. So today, I want to apologize to you. Without the security of a stable home, 
for the certainty of a warm meal. While the uh, city experienced economic development throughout the past day, decade, too much of it was scattershot. Too little reached the people in the greatest uh, need, and too many people knew without work. My administration set out in a new direction. We brought every group to the table, and we worked together to foster development that benefits every district resident. And, and I like to think that our uh, efforts are bearing fruit. You can see it all across the city. Unemployment in our poorest neighborhoods has fallen significantly. And if we stay the course, if we double down on our commitment, if we refuse to accept anything less than success, we will see everyone in our great city, the District of Columbia, thrive and prosper. We can do this, you all. We can do it. You know what? I'm not going to say we can do it. We will do this.
We're going to continue to insist that our employers hire more and more of our residents so that we can make sure that people who live here get the jobs and they pay their tax dollars right here in the District of Columbia. <laughs> we developed the, uh, the One City, One Hire program and it's put nearly 9,000 of our friends and neighbors back to work. Unemployment uh, in our hardest hit uh, boards uh, continues to drop. Citywide, when we came in office, we had an unemployment level of 11.2%. Today, it is down to 8.6%. <laughs> and yes, while it is still high here in Ward 8, unemployment has dropped from a staggering, when we came into office, a staggering 25.4% to today being 18.2% still high. And we're going to work as a to bring it down. We are, we are teaming with uh, the unions uh, who've been great friends and working with us. And by the way, we've done, we've done we're doing well in terms of treating people right. That is our workforce, ladies and gentlemen. These are the people who work for us every day. We need to treat our workers right in the District of Columbia if we want to have a city that's going to thrive and grow. And we're also delighted to work with our private sector overall uh, on job training programs that are are helping our young uh, men and our young women uh, get into the workforce. I think we know the job market is incredibly competitive, and we're helping our District of, Red of Columbia residents uh, to be able to compete. But even with the success, we still face huge challenges. Our city is getting more expensive. Everyone feels it. Residents with the fewest resources sometimes uh, feel, what they feel actually, is actual fear. Fear that they're not going to be able to make ends meet. Fear that they cannot afford to live here anymore. Fear that they will have no place to be in our great city. Thousands of long-term residents, many of whom are senior citizens, people who held the city together during its toughest times, are among those those are the folks who sacrificed and they forthrightly faced the challenges, frankly, when a lot of folks fled and left the city. So today, people who move into the District of Columbia, because it offers opportunity and a wonderfully diverse culture, we welcome them to the District of Columbia. But we cannot forget those who held our city together. They, they should not be afraid, they shouldn't feel the fear that soon a home in our city will be entirely out of their reach. That's why I committed, and we've already moved on it, not pledged, moved on it, I committed an unprecedented investment of $187 million to affordable housing. We are, we are on track, ladies and gentlemen. I invite you to look at uh, our, our task force report on this, building opportunities. We are on target to be able to preserve or to build 10,000 new units of affordable housing, 3,000 of which already are complete. We have now launched 47 additional projects in the city. We are going to get this done, ladies and gentlemen. If somebody wants to live in the District of Columbia, there ought to be a place for them in our city. That's 10,000 homes where people can raise a family, they can pursue their dreams, 
and frankly, pursue them more comfortable in knowing that they have a place in the District of Columbia's future. No, this is not an administration that will drive people out of the city. We are going to work to make sure people have a place in the District of Columbia. You know, we are especially uh, going to honor our senior citizens. They are the backbone of the city, right? We're going to guarantee that their golden years are not filled with worry, but instead filled with pride. <coughs> our city is strong. The people who live here have made it that way. Many of them are the senior citizens who made those sacrifices. We've stood tall during tough times. We've uh, faced great challenges, many of which, frankly, are not our own making or doing. By the way, did we yield to Congress when their dysfunctional shutdown and the rest of the <laughs> No, ladies and gentlemen, while they shut down, we stay open for business. <laughs>
people who are black, brown, white, people who are Latino, Asian, throughout the world, gay, straight, and able-bodied, and people with disabilities all together. We are creating a city that every resident should be proud of, proud hopefully to be able to embrace and nurture, and a city that empowers every one of us, empowers every one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, one city indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much.